I wish you all a very good morning or good afternoon, good evening as per your time zone. Most respected Right Reverend Doctor Anil Kumar John Servant, the Master of the Sarampur College, Dr. Van Sang Lura, the principal of the college and convener of Senate of Sarampur, the honorable members of the Council of Sarampur, the Senate of Sarampur, distinguished guests from different parts of the globe, and dear family members of Reverend Dr. Sanjay K. Pastro and Dr. Emmanuel Adis Emmanuel Tapapudi, principals of the affiliated colleges, officers of the Senate, and dear friends. I believe there is no need of any kind of introduction to this program. Everybody is well aware of the great loss the Senator Sarambu met with due to the sad demise of our dear friends and colleagues, Reverend Dr. Sandhanu K. Patro, the Registrar, and Dr. Matthews Emmanuel Tathapadi, the Honorable Secretary of BCSOC. And of course, it is very difficult to fill the vacuum created by their demise. They have contributed a lot to the theological training program of India as well as the near neighboring countries and also their exemplary leadership to the Indian church as a whole. Let us thank for these dynamic leaders and the blessings and graces God has given to us through these brilliant eminent scholars, academicians, as well as good administrators. Personally, I lost my two good friends. They were friends even from our theological training, especially um, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Matthews was a former student of FFRRC. At the time, I was doing my BD program in Kotayam Orthodox Theological Seminary. And also, myself and Dr. Patro have done our research in the field of religion at Satri together. And so I have a long, a strong relation and friendship with these two eminent figures. So that's why I said personally, the demise is a great loss in my life. <laughs> However, we have to humbly submit ourselves to the will of God. And definitely we can say that they have fought a good fight, finished their course, and they are waiting for the crown of righteousness. Let us start today's program with a word of prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God, Amen. Almighty God, Lord of ages, you are the life and resurrection. We are thanking for this, for the graceful life and contribution of your servants and our brothers, Dr. Patro and Dr. Emmanuel Patapuri. You have showered upon us your abundant blessings through the, your servants. Lord, we are coming together in your spirit through this virtual medium. Be with us 
empower and encourage each one of us. Help us to continue our mission which you have, you have entrusted upon us. We pray for the buried family members of both Dr. Patro and Dr. Tathapadi. God, be with us for the strengthening of your church and for the glorification of your name in the world. Glory and honor is always for you and with you. We pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I welcome Dr. Ashwadi John, Vice Principal of Sarangur College for Bible reading. For this uh, special memorial service, the scripture portion has been taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace, what gain have the workers from the, their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God had, has done from the beginning to the end. Here and sorry. Thank you. Dear friends, we are blessed with the presence of our master, Right Reverend Dr. Anil Kumar John Sarvan. Sir, I welcome you for the devotional address. Grace and uh, peace be unto you all in the resurrected name of uh, our dear Lord Jesus Christ. May the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort rest and abide with you. At the outset, I would like to thank the President of the Senate of Sarampur College, Metropolitan Dr. Zacharias Mareprim, for organizing this memorial service and also inviting me to preach during this service. <clears throat> it is more than a memorial service. I say that it is celebrating the life and ministry of Dr. Patro and also Dr. Emmanuel. My dear bereaved family members of late Dr. Santino Kumar Patro, Mrs. Sujata Das, Sanjog, Sambit, and Saurabh and also the family members of late Professor Dr. Tatapudi Manuel Matthews, Mrs. Raj Kamal Matthews, Neeti and Nyaya, and the entire Senate of Sarampur College family in Christ. I, as the master of Sarampur College, have no words to describe the grieving loss 
of late Dr. Santino Kumar Patro and late Dr. Tatapudi Matthews Emmanuel. We offer our deepest condolences to both the bereaved families in this time of distress and grief. We assure the families our prayers, solace, and divine comfort. Dr. Santino Patro was a highly qualified person and also an ordained presbyter of CNI Katak Diocese. He worked with World Vision and also served as the faculty of Eastern Theological College, Jorhat, and Gurukul Theological College and Research Institute, Chennai. He served as a registrar of the Senate of Sirampur College from 2013 till 2021. Dr. Patro had an excellent leadership skills, which he has proved while serving with us. He was an able administrator, we all know, a great theologian and a visionary leader. Dr. Tatapudi Emanuel was a very jovial and intelligent person and also an able administrator and a theologian. He served as the principal of ACTC Hyderabad and also he served as the secretary of BTSSC. Friends, by the loss of these two great personalities, I say that we have lost two pillars of the Senate of Sirampur College. Very recently, we conducted the convocation ceremony and no one had an inkling that a healthy person like Dr. Patro and Dr. Emmanuel would be untimely separated from us. Both the news was very much shocking to all of us. No one expected that we will lose both of them in such a short span of time. They have fought the fight, they have run the race, and they have reached the eternal destination. In a, in a twinkling of an eye, the visible has become in invisible. The perishable has become imperishable. The temporal has become eternal and the mortal has become immortal. Friends, we have been going through a very critical time in the history. We all are surrounded by fear, uncertainty, disaster and death. This pandemic has unleashed it, its death pangs to all those who get afflicted and it has taken a toll of the lives of people in huge numbers in our nation as well as in the world. We never expected that Dr. Patro and Dr. Emmanuel will become victim of this deadly virus. We also have lost many bishops, pastors, church workers, seminary students and laity and may the Lord comfort all the bereaved family members or those who have lost their dear ones. Death is an unavoidable part of life. When death and loss come, it can have a devastating effect upon those who are left behind. Those who believe in the Bible, for them death is not an end, but the beginning of a new life. None of us want to talk about death or being ready to face death. To postpone death, we put all our efforts into approaching the best doctors and the best hospitals in the world. But when the time comes, one cannot run from it, but needs to surrender. There are different figures given to death in the Bible. I would like to mention a few of them. That is one is death is a sleep. You know, in John chapter 11 and verse 11, Jesus said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Lazarus was dead, but Jesus called it sleep. Sleep brings rest to the human body, and the death brings rest to the believer's body. Sleep is not a permanent condition, and to God neither is death. It is just a necessary step to pass from this temporary world to God's eternal home. It is not an end, but the beginning of a new life. Therefore, death is like night's worth of sleep. Secondly, death is a departure. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6, the time of my departure is at hand. The word departure literally means to pull up that anchor and set to sail. 
in this world we are anchored with material thing materialistic things in death the anchor is pulled up and set sail for the golden port also bible talks death is an exodus the word exodus means going out in the book of exodus we see people going out it was a going out a bondage into li into liberty from a land of sorrow and affliction into a land of flowing with honey and milk therefore death is entrance into the land of promise also bible says death is a removal in second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1 it says <clears throat> now we know that if the earthly tent we live in it is destroyed we have a building from god an eternal house in heaven not built by human hands it is an it is an exchange of a tent for a house life below is a pilgrimage in a fragile tent it is not permanent death is like pulling up the tent pegs holding up the canvas and moving to a permanent place many of us we see death as an ultimate defeat but friends let me tell you that god sees death as an ultimate deliverance now dr patro and dr emmanuel have pulled their tent pegs and they've already folded their canvas and they've pulled their anchor and reached the golden port let me please know that death is inevitable today tomorrow or sometime later you and i have to live this earth in the same manner no one can escape death unless the lord returns death may approach anyone at any time it arises regardless of religion sex education status or economical standards in ecclesiastes we read it says that there is a time for everything a season for every activity under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to harvest in verse 11 it says god has made everything beautiful for its own time he has planted eternity in the human heart but even so people cannot see the whole scope of god's work from beginning to end friends we cannot understand god's time but we all know that he has made everything beautiful in his time we we very much wanted dr patro and dr emmanuel on this earth we pleaded in tears day and night we said to god the family needs them the institution needs them and the society needs them please heal them and give back to us but we got the answer from god and god said no my child has done enough now let him rest from all human toil and more than anything i need him friends it is not the age of a person at the time of death that matters but the time measured by special moments the person's contribution during his life are very important dr patro and dr emmanuel have contributed immensely to the kingdom of god the very fact that we are still alive in the midst of this pandemic means god has a purpose for all of us to be on the face of this earth he wants to accomplish that purpose through our lives therefore it is important that we must utilize all the opportunities to serve and care for one another we are aware that the lost opportunities will not come back let us not forget that life is not a destination it is a journey we can't afford to waste one special moment given by god the best tribute you and i can give to dr patro and emmanuel is to understand their commitments to god church and society and follow them diligently the blessed assurance of the lord is with the families as we share their sorrow and mourning he has been our help in ages past and shall be so in the ages to come we draw solace and comfort from his everlasting presence i express my deepest gratitude to all of you for standing by this very delicate stage of life and be fearless as we go out to do his work may god bless the bereaved families with his peace and strength as we continue to pray for one and all may the lord make his face shine on all all of us accepting his desire may god himself the god of peace sanctify you through and through may your whole spirit 
soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our dear Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Master, for your blessed message as well as condolences. Let us hear an angelic song, hymn from uh, the choir of Gurugur Lutheran Theological College and Research Institute, Chennai. <laughs> Respected President of the Senate, Metropolitan Dr. Zakarias Mar Abrim, Master of Sirampur College and Principal of Sirampur College, distinguished guests, ecumenical partners, 
leaders from different institutions and churches, Sirambur family, friends, and families of late Dr. Sandanogi Patro and Dr. Matthews E. Tadabudi. Condolences to both the family members. Thank you for giving me the, this precious time to see a few words about the life of late Dr. Sandanogi Patro, Registrar of Senate of Sirampur College, my colleague in a long time friend. We have been closely associated as student at Union Biblical Seminary Pune during the BD studies. We were also colleagues at Eastern Theological College Johart as teachers and in the Senate of Sirampo College, we were working together. His untimely death has created a big vacuum for the family, the Senate and churches in India in particular. We are shocked, shattered, and still in a denial mood that he is no more. Late Reverend Dr. Sandanuki Patro was the youngest and the fourth child of Mr. Puna Nanda Patru and Mrs. Subakini Patru. He was born on 20th October 1960 at Perhambur, Odisha. That is also his final resting place where his mortal remained was buried on 7th May 2021. Dr. Patro lost his father at a very early stage. Since then, his mother single-handedly brought them of all four children. Dr. Patro did Bichilar of Divinity from Union Biblical Seminary, Pune, and graduated in 1984. He did his Master of Theology from United Theological College, Bangalore, in 1988 to 1990, and Doctor of Theology from South Asia Theological Research Institute, Satri, from 1996 to 2000. He got his doctorate in 2002 in the field of religions. He got married to Sujata Das on February 27, 1987, and they have three lovely sons, Mr. Ja Sanjo Patro, Mr. Sambit Patro, and Mr. Sorab Patro. All three children are well educated. Sanjo is in Hanover, Germany, currently working with World Reform Church. Sambit is completed BC engineering in planning for his postgraduate studies. And Mr. Sorab has done post-graduation in working in Canada. Mrs. Suchada Das is a, also a good friend of mine, is a trained teacher. She has taught in several schools in different places. Dr. Patru belonged to the Church of North India. He was ordained as presbyter by Sinai Katak Diocese. Odisha in 2005. After his BD, he worked a brief period in USI and then later worked in the World Vision at Kolhapur, Maharashtra. He taught at Eastern Theological College, Johar Assam from 1990 to 96. Their second son was born at Johar. From 2000 to 2013 to March, he taught at Gurugul Lutheran Theological College in Research Institute, Chennai. At Gurugul, he shouldered several responsibilities like head of the department, academic dean, including head of women's studies department, HUD. He was a well experienced professor supervised up to doctoral students. A number of students have been graduated under him. He joined us the Register of Senate of Sirampur College in April 2013. 
in work in the office till his last breath on May 5, 2021. He was a hardworking man, had many visions and dreams for the Sendan of Sirambo College. He was a good administrator, very friendly, and very his vision to promote contextual theological education, strengthening theological curriculum, and to expand theological education in South Asia and beyond are his legacies. We assure you that the Senate of Sirambo College will carry his visions forward faithfully. He was an eminent scholar, teacher of religions, a prolific writer, and a good visionary leader. He was also a feminist, always concerned for gender justice in theological education and ministry. In fact, his doctoral research was on the topic, the images of the dark Kali, the celebration of womanhood in Kali tradition. In fact, he had written many articles on feminist theology. He authored two books and contributed several articles in refuted international and national journals. Two books are, one, A Guide to Religious Thought in Practices, which is uh, widely used by the BD, MDH, and also doctoral students. Number two, a feminist reading of womanhood in dark Kali tradition. His loss is irrepressible for the family and the Senate and also the theological world. We earnestly request you to uphold the family members, loved ones, and the Senate family in prayers. With this short um, story, I just want to end up condolences to the family and rest in peace, Dr. Sandanu Ki Patru. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lemon Pula, for the nice presentation. I invite Reverend Dr. Akamruti Samuel, the treasurer of the Senator Sarambo College, to present the life story of late Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Matthews Tatapuri. Respected Master of Senate of Serampu and my beloved President of Senate of Serampu and the dignitaries and the principals and all the participants of this memorial service of our beloved uh, Reverend Dr. Santana Patro and uh, my relative, and my my guide towards theology, uh, Reverend Doctor Satapudi. It is very difficult to me to say a few words about Reverend Dr. Tatpuri Matthew Manier. I knew him from my his childhood. But because we are neighbors and relatives, actually he is a, a colleague of my second brother. in college, uh, high school studies and college studies. He's very legendary in dealing with any type of challenge. He's a great 
leaders of our Christian community here in Andhra Pradesh. From childhood, is very particular and very enthusiastic person with the topics dealing to achieve a victory in that particular issues. While he was uh, a principal of ACTC, I did my theology in ACTC, a Bachelor of Christian Studies and a Master of Christian Studies. He encouraged me a lot. And not only myself, he encouraged so many students to learn, to study theology. And he pleased it to think uh, the staff of SPC and he tricked them other places of India and he encouraged and he successfully conducted convocation in ACT. It's a rememberable convocation in the history of ACT. At this time, I don't think that uh, there is no, not uh, necessary uh, to introduce his theological uh, status because everybody knows his daring and dashing activities and his uh, uh, theological degrees. And his father, Tatapudi Imarius, he worked as a superintendent in uh, social welfare department. And his mother, Srimati Chandra Lila Emmanuel. She was a head nurse in government general hospital in health department. Both are rendered beautiful services with good witness in the society. In their family, Ratapudi Emmanuel is the eldest son. He has one sister and one brother. The younger brother, many years before, he went to be with the Lord. Now, his sister, Matilda, is only a one in their family. They are residing in Rajamandri in Andhra Pradesh. I think Tatapudi Emmanuel got married in 90, 1990 with Raj And both God blessed them with two daughters. My connection is. Uh, Gone. Hello. Yeah. There is a technical problem. So they have two daughters, Niti and Nyaya. Both are doing uh, their higher studies. And both and all the family members allowed so much. Uh, Reverend Dr. Tatapudi Emmanuel. 
he increased the christian community he increased the youth to do theological studies to work in the church as a representative of our lord it is very sad and timely we went to leave the lot so my deepest condolence to the bereaved families of dr patru and dr satapodi this is the time all the participants please remember in your daily prayers and uphold the bereaved family our lord god may comfort them i am thankful to the president and the presider of this program to giving me this opportunity to say a few words about my beloved satapudi and he himself recommended me to work in senate of tirampur in the year 1918 first i was selected as senator and in the year 1920 i was appointed as a treasurer and dr patru and dr emmanuel both are a very nice person and they directed me and they accepted my direction also in uh correcting the accounting system of the senate of sirap it is my privilege to work as a treasurer in senate of sirap thank you president for giving me this opportunity to say a few words about the two legendary theologians the god servant thank you thank you thank you dr gomurthy samuel for your words of condolences and presenting the life story of the beloved tathapadi uh, emmanuel now let us hear the reminiscences from distinguished personalities i would like to invite dr ansan yura the principal of the sarangar college the secretary of the council of sarangar as well as the convener of senate of sarangar dear dr vasan gura arivitas you should be has to and you can you hear yes okay yeah there is a i think technical problem dear metropolitan dr zacharias president of senate of sirampur college bishop dr anil kumar john sarven master of sirampur college and my dear friends let me begin by my tribute to late reverend dr santanu kumar petro 
and Rain Professor Dr. Matthews Emmanuel Tatapudi by reading the psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I believe Reverend Dr. Santanu K. Padro and Reverend Professor Dr. Matthews Emmanuel Tatapudi did not fear when they were struggling to recover from the second wave of this deadly novel coronavirus. Sorrow fills my heart during this moment when Mrs. Petro, Mrs. Atapudi and their family members, friends and my beloved colleagues join in this memorial service. Today is going to be a hard day, but I'm thankful that we are all here today to commemorate the good deeds of these two great personalities. A man with vision since he was a student of BD. Later, he completed his MTH and DTH and went on to teach at Eastern Theological College, Jorhat, and Gurukul Lutheran Theological College and Research Institute, Chennai. A servant of God, Reverend Dr. Pedro Solder, the Herculean task of resistors of the Senate in the year 2013. And since then, he had shaped the theological education as per the needs of the churches and the society under the guidance of Holy Spirit. I had the opportunity to work closely with Reverend Dr. Pedro for more than five years. We share the pain, problems, and laughter and above all, we work together to, to fulfill the mission of our founding father. As a resistor and a colleague, we had several instances of differences in opinions of our goals, always met at the institutional benefit. I'm very sad, I'm very sad that what we have planned to have a family dinner together can now be fulfilled only in heaven. His cultural ethos and caring attitude has always set high standard to work value thereby, uplifting the morale of all theologians as a whole. I would request everyone to take time to repent this great loss and to remember the happiness you felt with him around. His life is like a flower that blossom and spread the fragrance and it will continue to serve us and the society. Just as Jesus said, I am the resurrection of the, and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Dr. Pedro is a very friendly, hardworking person and uh, he has many visions for the theological education of India. Speaking about Reverend Professor Dr. Matthews Emmanuel Tatapudi, he was also a man with optimum positivity and wisdom from God. He was called upon by the Almighty to head the Board of Theological Education of Senate of Serampur College and to equip the people of God to respond to the contextual challenges in creativity by being faithful towards the gospel of Jesus Christ. I knew him from 2016, when the Serampur College Convocation was organized through his leadership as a principal in Andhra Christian Theological College, Hyderabad. He was a man of God. I met him again when I was a member of selection committee for the post of secretary of the Board of Theological Education of Senate of Sarampur College. I found him a very enthusiastic and positive person and very friendly. 
his meticulous understanding of the word of God and the guidance and influence of the Holy Spirit reveal the spark within him and is what I love the most in him. The demise of the true great theologians, leaders and soldiers of Christ is an institutional loss which can never be replaced. But as time is the best healer, our wounds too would be healed. Let us follow the footprints of these two great leaders and whose work will be remembered by us and the churches and the sites and the society four times forever. My deepest condolence to the bereaved family of Dr. Pedro and Dr. Tatapudi. Goodbye, Dr. Pedro and Dr. Tatapudi. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vansangura, for your words of condolence. I request Reverend Dr. Justin Moses, Deputy Minister of Senator Sarandal College, uh, for his sharing. Dr. Justin. Yes. Uh, let me let me bring this uh, short reminiscences about my two of my colleagues who uh, left us in no time, even with, without giving us time to think uh, what has happened. Uh, Sarampur is my second home. My close association with Sarampur College and the Senate started ever since I decided to do my MTH under my guru, Dr. K.P. Alias, way back, back in 2004. Immediately after my MTH studies in 2006, I was asked to join the faculty of the theology department. I served as a professor of religions at Sarambur College and Nibdits for 11 years before I joined the Senate as the deputy registrar in 2017. When I attended the interview at Bangalore with the encouragement and support from Principal Sarampur College, that is when I met Dr. Tatapuri, who was also another applicant. I applied for the post of Dean Extension Studies and Deputy Registrar. During the interview, Dr. Patro asked me about my preference. I told Dean Extension, as I had two young children who would benefit from good education facilities in Kolkata. Dr. Patro asked, I quote, why don't you like to work with me? I smiled and replied, I can work with you, sir. But I expressed only my preference. Everyone laughed. Both of us were selected for our respective responsibilities. I kept the question of Dr. Patro close to my heart and decided to work with him closely. I look back now and wholeheartedly say that what an experience to work with him all these four years. Dr. Patro and Dr. Tatapudi were unique. Dr. Tatapudi was a theologian, biblical scholar, church leader, administrator, arbitrator, whatnot. He represented the Senate among the churches in India and abroad. He was a good cook too. He promised that one day he will cook for the Senate friends. He left us before it happened. He loved his family and daughters. He used to say, I am a minority in my family. That means three women and one man. I have two daughters and a wife. But he also said, to know the affection of children, a father should have a daughter. Dr. Manuel Tatapuri was an elder brother to me. He took the freedom to advise, guide, and groom me in all these four years. He used to tell me one should aim to do well in the present and other things will fall in place. We traveled in India and abroad together and even were put in the same room at times. He was a nice person to accompany and work with. Meetings including Dr. Tatapuri were lively and interesting. He expressed his views bold and strong. His ideas of church and administration were always intertwined with concerns for the poor and the marginalized. 
he was a churchman with the concern for the egalitarian and inclusive church. We acknowledge with gratitude his contributions to BTSSC. Dr. Patro, on the other hand, was more than my colleague. He entrusted responsibilities to me one after another, and I always felt his accompaniment throughout. He encouraged me to do things boldly. I enjoyed absolute freedom as a child enjoys in the family. He took care of me like an elder brother and at times as a son, colleagues and fellow minister. Often I was amazed to see the way he could handle difficult situations. He was blessed with inborn leadership qualities. He felt proud of himself coming from an ordinary family background yet being able to contribute at this level. He was a true theologian grounded in the context, a scholar in the branch of religions, and above all, a Christian with a heart to listen and empathize with the marginalized. He upheld ecumenism in theological education and embraced leaders of different denominations during his leadership at the Senate of Sarambu College. He was a visionary who always aimed for achieving great things for God. He modernized the Senate office and en enhanced its facilities with studio, come lecture room, seminar hall, guest rooms. He initiated income generation projects that will make Senate self-sufficient. Some of his initiatives, such as online theological education to South Asia and Global South, were novel and brought partnership with like-minded agencies. His simplicity and approachability he earned him many friends and thus lifted the image of the Senate. He never compromised the quality of theological education nor let down the legacy of the Senate of Sarambu College. He will be remembered for his passion to serve tirelessly for the promotion of theological education. The families of Dr. Patru and Dr. Tatapuri stood with them in good and challenging times, contributing immensely to their success. We thank them at this time. The untimely demise of Dr. Patru and Dr. Tatapudi is a challenge that they have to overcome. The family needs God's accompaniment, our support, and continuous prayers. As they plan to move forward in the absence of their soulmate, Father, we pray that God will show them the way and lead them and fill them with comfort and ever-loving presence. Be the Senate family are battered, tested, and challenged by the series of events in the last few weeks that we neither deserved nor expected. We have lost leaders who were shouldering the responsibility of imparting theological education in India and the global south. They have left a great legacy and pathway to be followed and emulated. Beautiful four years of friendship, support, care, guidance, encouragement, and above all the nurture. The collegiality and work ethics I occurred from you really has influenced me and strengthened me to face any challenge that I may face in my life. Mark chapter 2, verse 18 to 22, read like this. Now, John's disciples and the Pharisees were often fasting. So the people came to Jesus and asked, why don't your disciples fast like John's disciples and those of the Pharisees? Jesus replied, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. We mourn because you, were, you are not with us today. We travel, dine, stay, thought, and share together success and failures. Now there is vacuum loneliness. I never felt so lonely like, like this before. Thank you so much for leaving beautiful memories. As long as I live, your memories will be with me. We miss you badly. God will answer our question, why? When we meet God with you. We that you to my friends, and will we meet again you with Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Justin Moses, for your language of the heart. I welcome Dr. Rodin Moya Rake, Dean of Extension, Sector. Respected Master, Sharampur College, President of the Senate, 
principal of Sarampur College, all my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, with great pain and agony, I'm speaking now on behalf of extension program, Senate of Sarampur College, to pay a tribute to two great leaders, Reverend Dr. Santanu K. Patro, the Registrar of Senate of Sarampur College, and Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Patapudi, Secretary of the Board. A few weeks ago, we were together in Chennai for board meetings, Senate meeting, and Sarampur College convocation. And now we have to say goodbye. And it is almost unreal and like a dream, difficult to accept the reality. I know Reverend Dr. Patro since my doctoral studies. He was the ex external examiner for my assessment papers. After he came to Sharampur, we know each other more closely. When I was teaching at Bishop's College, Kolkata, he asked me to help in working out the syllabi for optional papers in the Department of Religion. And I did my best for him and also for the Senate. When I was in Mizoram doing pastoral ministry, he still remembered me and invited me for the revision of science and religion syllabus and also to present a paper in the seminar organized by the Senate to mark the bicentenary of Sarampur College. As far as I know him, he is a humble, down to earth man who is an able leader, firm in Christian commitment, a capable leader who knows what he is doing, a man of integrity and excellent scholarship. He always encourages me in promoting the extension program and bakes me up in every activities we are taking in running and promoting the Senate extension program. His contribution to the Senate and overall theological education in India and South Asia is tremendous. And we will remember him for many, many years. Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Tatapudi always called me brother. We know each other only for a few months since I joined chapter last year, but our friendship is extraordinary. I see him as a straightforward person what he feels is right. He has extraordinary quality of discerning and analyzing things. He has a strong personality coupled with excellent leadership quality. I see him as a born leader. He is always friendly and willing to help others. I always admire him for his boldness and courage to speak out when he senses that something is wrong. On behalf of Scepter and all the staff here, and also on behalf of all the approved examination centers all over India and outside, and students of extension studies, I pour out our deepest condolences to the family members of Reverend Dr. Santanu Patro and Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Tatapudi and assure them of our prayer support. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moya, for your words. Right, Reverend Dr. John Sadanda, the former master of the Sarambar College, as well as the president of Senate of Sarambar College, Tanay will join with us this meeting, but he has sent this message, and I, 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 I would like to uh, request Dr. Justin to read the condolence message of former master.
words of com comfort by right reverend dr john stephen sadananda former uh, former president of the senate of sarambu college and former master sarambu college we have entered into a reality of collective grief following the pandemic that has claimed millions of lives all over the world in the midst of this crisis situation we were all praying and hoping for the speedy recovery of reverend dr dr immanuel matthew tatapudi and reverend dr sandanu kumar patro the news of their death came to us as a shock which we never imagined their families and colleagues have undergone great distress and pain it is the bereaved and those who have passed through bereavement know what grief really means at this time we thank god for the words of comfort and inspiration scripture portion roman chapter 4 verse 8 says if we believe we live to the lord and if we die we die to the lord so whether we live or die we belong to the lord dr sandanu patro served as the registrar and executive officer of the senate of sarambur college dr immanuel tatupudi rendered his service as the secretary and executive officer of the btsss both of them came to the senate and the btsss with a lot of academic and administrative experiences though they were new to the functioning of the sarambur system and structure they started to manage the affairs of their respective offices efficiently i had the privilege of working with them from the beginning of their appointment to their respective post till the time of my stepping down as the master of sarambur college in 2019 since i had been acquainted with the board the senate and the council of sarambur college in different capacities for more than four decades it was always a joy to be associated with my colleagues both seniors and younger ones it gave us ample opportunities to relate ourselves meaningfully to the theological colleges ecumenical institutions churches of different traditions and ecumenical partners i thank god for all these rich experiences in particular in strengthening the cause of ecumenical theological education i joined the families friends colleagues associates and members of the fraternity of theological education in expressing our loss and sadness and acknowledging the importance of the lives of these two leaders that that catches us unprepared and overcomes us with grief sincerely asking god why is normal but it is impossible for us finite beings to understand infinite truth we firmly believe that god will show us the way the purpose of our life together and we are called to look up as people on the move trust god and carry on as individuals families and institution it is my prayer that god will continue to comfort the bereaved families with the experience of his nearness and enable senate and the board to face the emerging challenges discerning the signs of the time expecting great things from god and attempting great things from god don is satananda thank you justin thank you justin yes yes we are blessed with the presence of a former president of sanatan sarambu Right Rev. Dr. Isaac Mark Pirakshinas Trimeni. Trimeni, we invite you to share up your eminence. Respected Master of Sarambur College, Bishop Dr. Ayal Kumar, Dr. Ayal Kumar, president of sarkar sarabar college for him all sarabar family the students board members and all the students of our school and good friends well wishes greetings to all of you in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ it was with sadness 
you received the news of the demise of two of our close associates who are leading the Senator Sarampur College and Board of Theological Education. Of course, last 21st April, I had a talk with Dr. Santanu Patro, and I learned that he is not well. And he said, Bishop, now I feel better. You take care, you are traveling a lot. And that was a care that he showed to everyone who had association with him in different levels. We never thought that both Satapudi, Emmanuel Matthews, and Dr. Sandanu Patro will leave us. Yes, I am sure their life and witness to church and society will ever be remembered. The COVID-19 pandemic has become the greatest threat to life and all humanity on earth. All nations grapple with the tiny electronic microscopic virus that takes away thousands of lives on the planet. At this time, we, we gather together as a memorial service to give thanks to God for the life of these two eminent persons, Rev. Dr. Santani Patro and Rev. Dr. Tatapudi Emmanuel Matthews. We pray that God may give peace and strength to the Senate family, especially the family members of Sundarani Patro and Tatapudi Emmanuel. I remember the days we were together as officers of Senate of Sarampur College. The personal relationship that we developed the spirit of togetherness in decision making. It was a time of productive, creative engagement. Dr. Santanu Patro joined as the registrar of the Center of Salamburu College in 2013. His tireless work for keeping the Senate system more efficient and need to be appreciated. When he took charge of the responsible position, there were many challenges he had to face. The completion of the BD curriculum revision that was started in 2010, just had undergone many revisions and the finalizing of the whole curriculum. The MTH curriculum revision that we initiated and the planning and implementation of the centralized evaluation system that went well, and the bicentenary of Sarampur College and the centenary of Senator of Sarampur College celebrations. Of course, he worked very hard, and his dynamic leadership in all these programs earned him respect and goodwill from all. Passing away is a great loss to the Senate and the whole theological fraternity in India and in South Asia. Now, Dr. Tatapuri Emmanuel Matthews, as the Secretary of the Board of Theological Education, who assumed office in 2017 was keen to relate to the colleges and the institutions. He was very vibrant and action-oriented. The Charitan Sarambur family 
has lost a great leader who was always vocal for the upliftment of the downtrodden. At this time, it is also appropriate to remember all those who lost their lives at this COVID pandemic, especially Father Dr. K.P. Elias, a renowned scholar in comparative religion, was heading the Department of Religion in Bishop's College. And he was very much part of the Senate, both in the research committee and academic council. And his contributions as a scholar cannot be undermined. Yes, I am sure the loss of these prominent persons in the Senate will definitely create a vacuum that will be very difficult to fill at this stage. Theological education through the Senate of Sarapur College motivates and equips the people of God to develop their gifts and to offer their lives in a spirit of service to God and the world. Commitment, integrity, and interrelatedness are essential factors that stand out in the theological educator. No one in creation is rich, but one who fears God. No one is truly poor, but one who lacks the truth. These words of St. Ephraim had moorings on the life of these our brothers who serve the Lord and the people. The richness they experienced in relation to God made their life to be a ray of hope for many who had come in contact with them. Their free thinking and critical inquiry made them more proficient in theological discussions, addressing societal concerns and ethical issues. Along with St. Paul, they could say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is to serve for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. As we give thanks to God for these our brothers, we have the hope that yes, Jesus will always take care of the life of the family and the Senate. And the assurance that Jesus Christ has given, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe it also in me. My father is how there are many dwelling places. Jesus prepared a place for his faith. That is the comforting words that we find from our Lord. I express my condolences along with all who are gathered in this Zoom platform of thanksgiving and memorial of these our brothers. We express our condolence to the families of Santana Patro and Tatakuri Emmanuel Matthews and the whole Senator of Sarampur College fraternity and all good friends who are participating. May God bless us. And it's a painful time. And I express my heartfelt condolence at this time. Thank you very much for inviting me for this blessed occasion of remembering these are our good friends. May God bless us. Thank you, Lenny, for your 
words of condolences and your acquaintance with these uh, scholars. Dear friends, distinguished representatives from uh, different organizations are also invited to this memorial service. And we have a representative from WCC, Reverend Dr. Kusipa Nalomba, Program Executive for Ecumenical Theological Education and Professor at Ecumenical Institute, BOSI. I welcome Madam for your sharing. Thank you very much. Officials of the Senate of Sarampo, allow me to just say all protocols observed, dear sisters and brothers, the Acting General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, Reverend Professor Dr. Jan Salka, is unable to deliver this tribute uh, because of other duties. So he assigned me uh, to do it on his behalf. He sends his deepest condolences to the families of doctors Emmanuel and Patro, colleagues at the Senate of Sarampo, the Body of Christ in India, and indeed the ecumenical family. The WCC remembers Dr. Patro's contribution towards strengthening theological education and reforming theological curricula in South Asia. He was tireless in his quest to make theological education accessible to underserved communities in the global South. He was associated with the Global Digital Library on Theological and Ecumenism uh, Consortium, a project uh, of Global Ethics, Globe Ethics Net, and the World Council of Churches. Globe Theolib is an interactive global community that facilitates mutual connect connectivity, exchange, dialogue, and research cooperation among theological education institutions, scholars, and educators in, uh, in all regions of the world. During his tenure, Dr. Patro strengthened what has been a long history of close collaboration between WCC and the Senate of Sarampo. Since the 1950s, the ecumenical movement has emphasized the importance of local churches as agents for contextual mission and theological formation. In that regard, the more than 200 year legacy of the Senate of Sarampo affiliates, which are situated in their, in their respective local communities, is an inspiration to the wider ecumenical movement. It's a cause to which our departed brothers dedicated their lives, and we are truly thankful. Allow me to speak on behalf of ecumenical theological education the program for which I am responsible at WCCETE. I personally did not uh, ever meet uh, Dr. Patro, but we had corresponded when I was invited to the convocation uh, just when I joined WCC in 2019. I was unable to uh, come because of conflicting or the co conflict in the schedule. However, two of my uh, uh, predecessors, had a reflection uh, on the life and the work you know, that they did together with uh, Dr. Patro. Therefore, ETE uh, joins the family and the Senate of Sarampo in mourning the loss and celebrating the memory of our colleagues and collaborators in theological education. My two predecessors, Reverend Dr. Dietrich Venner, and Professor Dr. Amele Ekue encount encountered Reverend Dr. Patro and enjoyed a productive working relationship with him. Vena says he enjoys working uh, with he enjoyed working with him for several years uh, in his previous role as WCC ETE program executive. He remembers Dr. Patro for his competence, ecumenical vision, and passion. 
He also remembers his human warmth and humility from their many encounters. Ekue remembers her collaboration with Dr. Patra during the period 2014 to 2019 when she served in this position. She recalls his calm and warm personality as well as his professional rigor and keen interest in advancing contextual theological education in India and beyond. Writing to Dr. Moses yesterday to explain why he could not deliver this tribute, the WCC Acting General Secretary, Professor Dr. Uh, Jan Salker reminisced in this way about Reverend Dr. Patro, and I quote, I met him personally when I came to Serampo some years ago. He was a great theologian, devoted academic, and a wonderful colleague, end of quote. Those we love never entirely depart, for we carry them in our hearts. May the enduring memories, the encouraging legacy of our brothers and colleagues remain an inspiration to us all. And may their souls rest in eternal peace, comfort and peace in our risen Lord Jesus Christ to the bereaved families. I thank you. President, sorry, please unmute. Sorry. I am sorry, I am sorry, I am sorry. Thank you, Dr. Kusiba, for your words of condolences and reminiscences. Uh, dear friends, Dr. Michael Bale from EMW is with us, and I welcome Dr. Michael for his uh, words of reminiscence. Respected Master, President, dignitaries of the Senate family, dear families of Dr. Patro and Dr. Emmanuel, dear friends, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It is sad that we come together to mourn the untimely death of these two men today, and it is comforting to share this sadness with so many who mourn their death. I appreciate and join in the word that all of you have found for them, appraising their work and for their service for the Senate family. I feel even honored to be invited into your assembly and to speak at this occasion. And so on behalf of the Association of Protestant Churches and Missions, I express our pain for this loss, which we also feel. We are thankful for the achievements of these two men for theological education. And we will especially miss Dr. Patro as registrar in an ongoing partnership for which we are, for which he has been proved to be so fruitful. I have known both of these two men and I knew Dr. Patro a bit better and I will miss him and besides many other memories that I share about the work that we have done together in the meetings, I also remember his humor and his laughing and it was always fun to be with him and he made his jokes and shared so much of his uh, humor with us and I also will not forget that. And so my heartfelt condolences go also to the families and uh, especially to the family of Dr. Patro who had welcomed me in their home. And let me close my short appreciation on the, this personal level also by a word of the church father Hieronymus, which is comforting me in this situation. He said, let us not grieve that we have lost him, but let us be thankful that we have had him, that we will still possess him for he who returns to God remains in the fellowship of the family of God. And with this comfort and in this hope, I close my words and greet all of you in the big family of the Senate in India. Thanks a lot. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Michael. I invite Dr. Just Wilson, Director of PC. Esteemed, friend, uh, esteemed friends and colleagues, first of all, uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, 
a foundation for theological education in Southeast Asia, uh, which is based in Philadelphia, USA. Uh, we would like to reiterate our condolences to the families of Dr. Tatapudi and Dr. Patro and their uh, friends and colleagues in the board and the Senate of Sarampo College. I was asked by three of our uh, Asian colleagues to convey their condolences. So I'd like to share that now. The first one is uh, uh, Dr. Man Hong Lin, Director of uh, Theological Education of China Christian Council. Some of you may know in 2014, Dr. Patro headed a group of theological educators from board and the Senate, along with the, a group of uh, church leaders of NCCI to China. And our Chinese colleagues even today remember uh, the sharing which Dr. Patros and others did about the vibrant theological education under Senate of Sarampo College. And they're also grateful for Dr. Patro and his colleagues for arranging a number of Chinese theological educators to come and visit India. The second uh, leader from Asia is Dr. Wang Weiching. She is the vice president of United Board for Christian Higher Education in Hong Kong. Uh, Dr. Tatapudi, Dr. Patro, and uh, Dr. Wong, a couple of years back, had a number of uh, conversation uh, about how theological education can also relate to some of the programs in Christian colleges and help the Christian colleges uh, in their programs. And as a result, one of the program has emerged that is Christian chaplaincy and Sarampur is playing a role on that. And the third person I would like to uh, mention here is Dr. Uh, Limwe Lequina is the executive director of Atesia, Association of Theological Schools in Southeast Asia, based in Manila. Atesia is a sister association in Southeast Asia, and uh, Senate of Sarampo College and uh, Atesia has a long relationship of years, including a joint uh, publication of Asia Journal of Theology, and uh, all all of them and their colleagues mourn the loss of uh, uh, our friend Satapudi and Dr. Patu. I would like to say just about my own association, since Dr. Patro and Dr. Satapudi assumed the office with the board and the Senate, I personally enjoyed their friendship and collegial support in sharing rich resources of theological, uh, of, of the Senate of Sarampo College with uh, colleagues in China, Southeast Asia, and especially in Myanmar. So personally, I am going to miss their support and friendship, but looking forward, a fitting tribute to them will be to continue the ecumenical relations in Asia, which they have nurtured during their term in their office. So having experienced the friendship and support of Dr. Patro and Dr. Tatapudi, the Foundation for Theological Education Board looks forward to be part of that tribute. Thank you for this opportunity to participate in this memorial service. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Joseph Wilson. Uh, now I welcome Dr. Sunilam Kali, Principal of Bishop's College, the Senate is thankful to Dr. Sonil. He, along with Dr. Rodin Moya, uh, made necessary arrangements for the treatment of Dr. Uh, uh, Patro in his last days in Kolkata. I welcome Dr. Sonil for his reminiscence. I thank the uh, President, Metropolitan Mar Aprem, the Master. Bishop uh, Anil Kumar Sarvand, the Deputy Registrar, 
the Senate of Sarampur College for choosing me as a representative of the principals of theological colleges of the Senate of Sarampur College to pay my tributes to Dr. Santanu Kumar Patro and Reverend Dr. Tatapudi Matthews Emanuel. First, Dr. S.K. Patro. I first came into contact with Dr. Patro when he was doing his MTH in UTC and I was doing my BD. And of course, later we would meet when he was teaching at Gurukul. He was such a jovial and friendly person. His stint as the registrar of the Senate of Sirampur College was truly momentous as he was a man with vision and energy. Each year we would see some new improvements in the Senate of uh, Sirampur College functioning. And as a principal of a theological college, we were obviously very closely associated with these new changes. Examination reform, there was the uh, collective marking system, the textbook uh, program, and uh, the latest was, of course, the move towards higher uh, degrees in South Asia. He worked very hard to build up the standard of uh, theological education of the Senate, and he very efficiently guided the Senate during those eight years. Dr. Patro was always willing to listen to us principals of theological colleges and take our suggestions. I think that my fellow principals will agree that he was an extremely efficient and hardworking registrar, and that the eight years that he was the registrar were some of the best that we have experienced. Dr. Patro's untimely and unfortunate passing has left a big void, which will be very hard to fill. At this time of sorrow, we especially offer our condolences as principals of theolo the theological colleges to Mrs. Sujata, Sanjog, Sambit, and Saurav. We can never understand properly your loss, but all we can say is that we will definitely uphold you in our thoughts and prayers. Regarding Dr. Tatapudi Matthews Emanuel, I first got to know him when the Senate convocation was held in ACTC Hyderabad, and he was the principal uh, of that college then. It was indeed a very well organized and memorable uh, board meetings, Senate meetings, and convocation. Dr. Matthews Emmanuel Tatapudi was a good teacher, principal, and administrator, and a very jovial person with a large heart. He guided the BTE SSC over the last few years and conducted many good programs. I especially, of course, also uh, remember his work as the secretary of the Board of Theological Textbooks publication in South Asia, known as the BTTPBSA. His visit to Kolkata uh, to help us with the Bengali Theological Literature Committee was a great encouragement to us. Through the passing of Dr. Tatapudi, theological education in India has lost a tall leader and we deeply mourn his passing. And I especially offer my condolences, personal condolences to Mrs. Rajkamal, Neeti and Nyaya over this untimely passing away of Dr. Tatapudi. May God grant you strength at this time of loss and may you be assured of our prayers for you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sunil. Corpus Corpus, Reverend Dr. Patrick Subhade, International Director for Vanavas Fund is with us. Uh, he is one of the recipients of Doctor of Divinity, Honorary Costa, last year's convocation. And I welcome Corpus Corpus for your reminiscence. Thank you so much uh, for the kind invitation to participate in this memorial service for our dear two brothers who have passed away. We at the Barnabas Fund and the Oxford Center for Religion and Public Life received the news of the home call of both Professor Satapudi and Professor Patro with deep, deep sadness. In fact, it has caused us considerable pain. I think we 
felt it because we had grown so close to them and to Saram Poor. They have pioneered our relationships with Saram Poor. With the Reverend Tatapudi, we worked on the BTESSC program, which is the Training for Transformational Ministry of Local Congregations Project. And with Professor Petro, we developed the partnership relationship with both Barnabas Fund and the Oxford Center for Religion and Public Life. We worked on the Smart Classroom, on the Shepherds Academy. We've developed relationships with Ecclesiastes Global Limited that assisted with uh, computerization and the examinations. And of course, we were working on the developing of the relationship with Sarampur, not just across South Asia with the new Dean's office, but also globally, because it is our conviction that the time for Sarampur to go global is now, and we share in that British vision, and Professor Patro was key to it. But it's not just with deep sadness that we remember them, for they are at home with the Lord. And so we come to celebrate the lives of two exceptionally gifted leaders, for the work that they have done, not just for Sarampur, but for the church in India and for their development of ecumenical relations across the world. There is no better way to describe them than to think of Paul's words to the Romans when he commended them in chapter 15 and verse 14. Paul speaks of the Romans as full of goodness, complete in knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. Those three elements, I believe, best describe our two dear brothers, now with the Lord, full of goodness. They were men of virtue, not just occasionally good, but it was part of their lives. And for the little time I've come to know them, and in particular my relationships with Professor Patro, who was always smiling, always a kindly face. I can't think of a single occasion when I saw him, let's just say, upset. He radiated goodness and virtue, complete in knowledge, a competence of theological knowledge that knew the scriptures, but also carries with it the deep depth of the Christian faith and competent to instruct one another. Both were teachers of the word, but there was a strangeness about this because competent to instruct one another carries the idea of exercising a pastoral development and oversight. And I can't think of a better description of both of those two in the way in which they gave leadership to uh, Sarampur and to the church in India in an oversight and in the development of ongoing relationships. So we are deeply thankful to the Lord for both of these dear brothers, and we shall miss them desperately. Thank you. Thank you, Corpus Corpus, Dr. Patrick Sulubi, for your words of condolences. Representing the National Council of Churches of India, Reverend Dr. Asil Ebenezer, the Young Secretary, will deliver the condolence message. I welcome Dr. Asif. Respected President of the Senate of Sarampur College, the Master of the Senate of Sarampur, Principal of the Sarampur College, Deputy Registrar and other officers 
of the Srampur family, members of the families of Dr. Emmanuel Matthews Tatapuri and Dr. Santana Patro, Santana Kumar Patro, friends and colleagues. It is a sad moment to come together to grieve over one of our best friends, those whom we thought we will walk in this earth for longer times. It is most unfortunate and distressing that we have lost them to this battle of the pandemic. Both the Senate and the families of our dear colleagues, I pray that you will receive our heartfelt condolences and deep sympathies at your great loss. We pray God's comfort over you. Dr. Emmanuel Matthews Tathapudi served on the general body of the National Council of Churches in India in his capacity as the secretary of the Board of Theological Education, Senate of Sarampur College. He came across to us as a thundering voice, a voice which will not take injustice lying, and in that sense, a prophetic voice. He would call a spade a spade and will not think of the consequences that he will have to face. We also saw him as somebody with a pathos for his own community, the sub-community within his old and Dalit community. And we were able to see the passion with which he had advocated for his community to come into leadership roles, which is something that is very important for people in that particular community and for the whole world, whole church and the theological fraternity to recognize. Privileging the disprivileged was one of his great qualities. And he mentored a lot of young people, sent them as interns to NCCI, sent them to do their masters in theological education. And we were witnesses to that fact. And we were able to accompany him in that process of privileging the disprivileged students to a certain extent. He was also passionate about healing the divisions among churches and among ecumenical councils in the NCCI family. He would always tell us that he was available for us to use him in the healing processes between faction ridden churches and councils. We are grateful to God for this great man and ask that God will continue to bless us with these good qualities that we have seen in him so that we could carry this legacy in this earth. Dr. Santana Patro came across to us as a theological educator with a heart, as somebody who did theologizing from his heart. And we cannot but remember the subtle humor that he always had to his theologizing and also to his relating with people. As many of you had already mentioned, he was a hardworking theological educator and an administrator in the field of theology. We have had very meaningful experiences of working with our dear registrar, particularly in the fields of disability. When I served as the director for social concerns in the Church of South India, and also in the field of human sexuality in the National Council of Churches in India. He was always willing to accompany any challenges that come in the way of the syllabus relating disability and also in human sexuality. He was a willing worker of people with different faculties and bringing that experience to theological education for his heart and humor, for his hard work and the hearty experiences that we have experienced with him. We thank God. We commit our prayers to the family of both our colleagues and ask that God will continue to give them peace and comfort. And we at the National Council of Churches and in the different churches in the family of the NCCI will continue to accompany both your families in prayer and will be available to you in whatever way you will need us. Our prayers to the Senate family as you seek to move on in your ministries for theological education. And we ask that God will pray and comfort you and guide you with God's wisdom and spirit. Amen.
Thank you, Rahul Azir. Now, Reverend Dr. Pakimdi Shamoil, the director of Henry Martin Institute, had about a close friend and associate of all of us. I welcome Dr. Pakim for your words of condolence. <coughs> Thank you, uh, President uh, Bishop uh, Maraprem and the families of uh, uh, Dr. Patru and Dr. Emmanuel Tatupudi and the family of the Senate of Sarambo. Uh, for me, uh, representing the institutions of the Senate, uh, journeyed with Dr. Emmanuel Tatupudi from the year 1988 uh, as a student of summer school at the Henry Martin Institute. Uh, then we both applied for a job at the Henry Martin Institute and I got into it and he went on to do his Old Testament studies. But we accompanied each other so well. As every one of us already said, he was a very loud voice. And um, one of my close friends, Reverend Dr. Chandran Paul Martin, we both always say that he's a maverick, but he's a very lovable maverick. And with working with him and Dr. Vasandra, the principal of UTC, uh, for bringing higher education in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh uh, in the form of ARC, uh, Dr. Tatubudi's contribution is immense. And uh, Dr. Vasantrao, Dr. Tatubudi, uh, Dr. Asirwadam, and myself, and Dr. Jacob of the Calvin Institute, we worked together to see this higher education uh, comes up in the region. And uh, it is uh, unmatchable or unthinkable if it may not be possible without the effort of Dr. Tatubudi. So we remember him so much on that. Coming to Dr. Patro, he has always been gracious, so gracious. And the way that he trusted us, those small institutions, he always used to say, he wanted to bring the people from the margin to the center. And uh, his trust was visible when he said that, why don't you, uh, you know, organize or conduct the convocation in 2019 at the Henry Martin Institute. Unbelievable, we are a very insignificant and a very small institution. And the trust that Dr. Patru placed on us was immense. And we were always close friends. And whenever he felt down, he used to come to Hyderabad, HMI, and stay with us for a week or three days, and we have fun. And similarly, when the virtual convocation was getting over on April 10th, he invited, saying that, we, why don't we go for a vacation on the April 11th to 13th? And it never took place. It's really difficult for me to, uh, really uh, comprehend things about these two gentlemen, uh, the way that they accompanied uh, this small institution as well as to see higher education, higher theological education develops in the region. I shall always miss my dear friends. Uh, they made me laugh and always they were uh, there to help me figure things out. Listen to me when I was upset and they cheer me up uh, when I was down. Both were fearless and forever curious about everything. Dr. Patro always used to tell me, there is only one way to remain happy, and that is to stop worrying about things which are beyond the power of our will. And they both lived uh, this quote, and I will try to live it. For certainly they no longer hear is something well beyond the power of our will. May God comfort the families of Dr. Patro and uh, Dr. Emmanuel Tathabudi. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Fakim. I welcome Reverend, Right Reverend Pradeep Samanri, the Administrator, Diocese of Amalsar CNI, representing the old churches in India. Your Grace, uh, the uh, Anil Kumar, the Master, and uh, your graces, the bishops, and uh, galaxy of uh, church leaders, theological educators, and dear sisters and brothers in Christ, and especially the bereaved family members of uh, both Reverend Dr. Santanu Patro and Dr. Tazapuri. The Indian church has lost to outstanding leaders and theologians. 
it is also a very personal loss to me too because i knew them very closely and we're planning things with dr dhatapuri we have been planning for a national theological consultation because i've been the the chairman of the theological commission of the church of north india and uh, we were planning for such a concentration in, in Batala, in my diocese, and also with uh, Dr. Santanu Patro, who had promised to visit us, uh, to help us in establishing a new theological college in this Northwest part of the country. But that was never to be. On behalf of our moderator, the most reverend Dr. P.C. Singh, and on behalf of all the churches in India, I convey my deepest condolences to all that, uh, that are grieving, especially the families. With a home call of these two friends, Many of her dreams are blown away by the cruel wind of the corona epidemic. We believe in eternal life. We believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I am confident that with the grace of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will meet our friends again. However, the loss of a father, the loss of a son, the loss of a brother is something that cannot be met with any word. No word is good enough to say to the members of the family, and especially when you are hoping that the person would get well, would be revived and will return to the family. The profound sense of grief, I want to tell the members of the family and all those who are grieving with the family that these two friends have left behind many sweet memories about which our friends are talking this evening. The void that is created by the sudden departure <laughs> cannot be filled by words. But probably the members of the family would remember good things about their father, about their husbands, and would try to fill this gap with those memories. Dr. Santanu and Dr. Tathapuri will always be missed and remembered. And therefore, we at this time join the family members in thanking God for these two great souls who were with us, but then have responded to the call of God to be with him in his company. What a glorious end. And that ushers a new beginning towards the eternal life. Friend, thank you for this privilege. You are all, especially the members of the family, are in our prayers. God bless you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Bishop, are you there? Yeah, I request Dr. 
Robert Conville representing the leading recipients of Sarandu College to say a few words. Bishop Mara Prem and my brothers and sisters in Christ, on the behalf of all the servants of God who are so privileged to be conferred the ordinary doctrine of divinity, I convey our deepest sympathies to the Sarampo Senate and the Sarampo College family. We were so very saddened when we we informed the homegoing of our dear friends, Dr. Santanu Patro and Dr. Matthew Emanuel. I also bring at this time the deepest sympathies from all the churches of Northeast India, especially my church, the Kasi Jaintia Presbyterian Assembly. We will always remember the challenging words that Dr. Patro gave at our graduation service. Dr. Patro was a friend whom I will always remember for his committed, commitment to Jesus Christ. He had taught at the Eastern Theological Seminary in Jorhat. And I know that the students have had the privilege to, um, to be under his guidance, were blessed by his life. He gave so much to so many. Our thoughts and our prayers go out very specially to Sister Sujata and the boys. We were also looking forward so much to be working together with Dr. Emmanuel in the future in the leadership on theological education. But God had more need for him in heaven. May the Lord God Almighty comfort Sister Raj Kamal and the girls. Our prayers go up to God for the continued wonderful ministry of Sarampur College. Friends, one day we and all our loved ones have gone ahead of us. will meet together at the throne of God in that new Jerusalem. May God bless us all. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Robert Conway. I request Reverend Dr. Paul Cornelius, Arthur Indian representative. Dear families of uh, Dr. Patro and Dr. Emmanuel, uh, Tata Puri, and the dear Senate family and dear leaders and colleagues of the Senate family, uh, I bring deep condolences from the Asia Theological Association uh, to all of you, and indeed to all of us. Uh, this is bittersweet, isn't it? Uh, and the bittersweet experience of loving and losing is, is uh, aptly expressed in a line from a poem by uh, Alfred Tennyson. And it goes like this. It says, it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And I suppose we can take it a little further for many of us and say it is better to have known and lost than never to have known at all. I'm deeply thankful for the opportunity to have known both these dear brothers, uh, Dr. Matthews Emmanuel Tata Pudi as a colleague and friend while we studied at Union Biblical Seminary together uh, and getting to know him then. And then over the years in our different roles, getting to know Dr. Santanu Patro as well. Um, and these dear brothers gave themselves so tirelessly uh, for the cause of theological education um, in its service as a handmaiden to the church in India and uh, across the globe. I personally am deeply thankful for their involvement and engagement with the Asia Theological Association over the last five years or so as uh, all of us sought to build closer ties with each other uh, for the sake of theological education and the church in this country. 
they leave a legacy, don't they? And all of us have talked about it. So many of us have reminisced. So many of us have talked about their contributions. Uh, and they do leave a legacy, not just in the ministry of training women and men for the varied ministries of the church, but I think more importantly in how they invested their lives in all of us and the deep influence that they brought into our own thinking, our own living, our faith, and our expression of it uh, as we sought to serve the gospel of Jesus Christ and to see God's kingdom established upon this land. And so we thank God for their lives. We thank God for their commitment that we carry now with us, for the legacy that we take with us as we continue the work that they continued from their forebears as well. Uh, and we take with us into the days ahead. Our brothers have transitioned from this earthly life into their heavenly one. And to God be the glory who has received them into his presence. The Lord bless all of us. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Paul. I welcome um, Mr. Sanjeev Ganguly, representing the Senate staff, to share his reminiscence. Sanjeev, are you with us? Unmute. Hello. Hello. Honorable Master, Honorable Master of Chirampur College, Honorable President of Chirat of Chirampur College, I think you have opened uh, two devices. Please put up one device and put one other. Otherwise, good night. Otherwise, echoing will be there. Honorable Master of Sirampur College, Honorable President of Senate of Sirampur College, Honorable Principal Sirampur College. Respected our deputy register, respected dean of SEPTA, respected dean of Satri, Mrs. Patro, families, and other colleagues. It, it is with deep sorrow on behalf of the Senate staff members, I hereby share our few fond memories and pay our tribute to late Dr. Santanu Kumar Patro. The registered Senate of Sirampur College, it is a huge loss for the theological fraternity of India, but we lost our elder brother, who was a guideline force for us for the last eight years as the capacity of the register. Though many of us who are involved in examination forces knew him from much earlier time during his days in Eastern Theological College, Jorhat, and later on, Gurukul Luthan Theological College, Chennai. As an examiner of religion, Dr. Patro succeeded by Dr. Robi Tiwari, who was also a professor of religions. Senate office is not a, like a normal office with working hours of 10 to 5, but it is a, like a family. And Dr. Patro is that sense was head of the family. Only a few months back, we celebrate his 60th birthday in a grand way. And now today we are binding him formal farewell with our heavy heart. He had many dreams. He wanted our office with modern facilities, equipped with modern technologies. He successfully executed many new things like our ultra-modern conference hall, guest house rooms and office rooms for office staff which was lacking very badly for years. We are fortunate enough to see him very closely for years inside and outside of the office. 
he started a new trend of traveling by train with office staff during convocation and that opened a scope for us to know Dr. Patro as a human being very closely. His simplicity attracted us. Last year in COVID situation, he provided the office car for the staff who are coming from outside Sirampur to protect them from COVID-19. In every way, he protect the office staff from different type of situation. Sometimes we had difference of opinion in office procedures, but at the end, we come to consensus for the common goal, which is the best for the interest of the institution. He always believed the institution comes first and the legacy of the great Sirampur trio must go on untouched. We never thought that he will not have will come back from the hospital. We had hope. We prayed every moment for him, but God had his own plans. We are lucky enough to work with Dr. Patro and got a chance to see what a great man he was. We will miss him dearly and wanted to extend our sympathies to the Mrs. Sujata Patro and his three sons. We want to conclude with the word of God, Isaiah 41, 120. But do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sanjeev. I welcome Alina Margaret for presenting BTSC staff. Yes, Alina, please. Uh, respected master, respected <laughs> president, and the chairperson of BTSC, uh, respected uh, deputy registrar. Dean of Satri, Dean of Scepter, and all colleagues and dear friends in Senate office. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak about late Dr. Emmanuel. I've known him for many years as a doctor student, as a faculty and principal of KCTC, and as secretary of PTSC for the last four years. It was a great experience for having worked with him. He was humble, peaceful, compassionate, kind and merciful. We felt comfortable, equal, and had a very good relationship. He had confidence in us. He was always concerned about us, our health, our needs, and helped us. We never thought that he would leave us so soon. I'm sorry. I couldn't help him when he was going through a hard time in the hospital because of my own health reasons. But hats off to Vasant. And I thank Vasant for being with him all the time, helping him in getting all that he needed till he got admitted in the hospital. But unfortunately, because of his own health reasons, he couldn't be with him till the end. It is hard to accept his sudden death. Certainly, the precious memories of him will remain in our hearts. So this is your time. Ours will surely come. In everything we all can say, God gives, God takes. Praise the name of the Lord. I conclude with the scripture portion. Paul's letter to Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. May God comfort the bereaved family of Dr. Emmanuel, his wife, Mrs. Rajkamal, daughters, Neeti, Nyaya, his near and dear ones, friends and colleagues. We miss you, sir. 
May your soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Lina, for your touching words. Uh, friends, let us hear the tribute of um, Trinity Theological College, Dimapu, as a beautiful, melodious theme. I welcome the choir.
Thank you so much, the dear ones of Trinity College, for this wonderful melodious and heavenly uh, song. Dear friends, the beloved family members of Dr. Patro and Dr. Patpuri are with us, and I request one from each family to say a few words. One from Dr. Chandra Nipandu. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm audible. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Senate for organizing the small memorial for my father. And uh, we are also glad, for the, uh, glad that the Lord has given us this opportunity to celebrate his life. I would just like to speak uh, a bit about my dad's life, his contributions and the type of person he was. So my father, he grew up in a poor and modest family in Orissa. Um, he lost his father when he was three years old and also lost two of his brothers during his childhood. The entire burden of his childhood was fell on his mother and uh, she played a huge role in his upbringing. And uh, my dad is the person he, he was today, largely due to his mother's contribution. And my father, he understood the value of hardship at a very young age. He realized the pain his mother was going through. So he actually, you know, he did a lot of menial jobs and he worked at a small tailoring store just to earn a few rupees so that he could help his mother. He got married in 1987 and he, his, he was an exemplary father and an extremely supportive extremely supportive uh, husband. He always encouraged my mother to, to push herself and do more than what she could. My mother also, both of them had a wonderful relationship and my mother supported my father through his studies. My, when my father was studying, my mother was supporting him uh, by working. And when my mother was unable to work, my father also did the same. My mother actually grew up in a conservative family and uh, she was restricted from doing so many things, but my father broke most of those barriers and he always encouraged her to do things that uh, women in India generally are, uh, generally don't do. So when she learned that, when she learned to drive the car, all her relatives were really surprised and they were, uh, you know, dumbfounded. And both of them had a plan and desire to start a school, a small school for the underprivileged. And I hope in the future as a family, we would be able to fulfill my dad's desire and even my mother's desire. As children, he always gave us his love and support. He always gave us his love and support. Uh, he has given us so many he has given us so many memories that we would never forget. He was always proud of us. Uh, he sent with, despite all the financial hardships, he sent uh, my brother abroad to study and uh, he's doing good now. And he was always proud of the fact that his uh, first son was uh, uh, doing theology. And we got the best education and he settled us for life. And it's because of him that today we are able and independent. I spent most of my childhood in uh, Gurukul and this was definitely the best uh, phase of our lives. We always talk about the good things about Gurukul. And my father also loved Gurukul so much and he gave his best for Gurukul. And Gurukul was instrumental in making my dad the person he was. Gurukul uplifted his career and for that we would always be grateful to Gurukul. He made a lot of good relationships with many people there. Uh, Reverend Dr. Mani Chako, Reverend Dr. Uday Kumar, uh, Reverend Dr. Sampi Matthew, Reverend Dr. George Zakaria, and many others were all good friends of my father. We still reminisce about our life in Gurkul. 
after gurkul my father was uh, appointed as the registrar of the senate and he always considered himself fortunate he told us that sometimes he would wake up from his sleep and he used to think to himself what is he really the registrar that that was the humility of him he loved his job and conducted himself with the utmost commitment and i used to wonder at times why my father displayed so much commitment but that was the person he always was he had a dream and vision to expand the senate the expand the influence of the senate he had so much plans and over the last 8 uh, years he has done so much and he always used to tell me like uh, when he retires he wants this he wants this for the senate and i really hope and wish that the senate uh, in the future they work work and push forward his plans i would like to thank the master bishop dr anil kumar john servant the president metropolitan dr zak Zacharias Mar Aprem, uh, the Deputy Registrar, Registrar Dr. Justin Moses, the Dean of Shatri, Reverend Dr. Limitula Longkumar, and the Dean of Septa, Reverend Dr. Rodin Mavia Ralte. My father always admired and supported. I always admired the support and contributions of your efforts. I would also like to thank his staff in the Senate office, Mr. Debashish Pathak. uh mr sanjeev ganguly mrs mosimi and other others who worked with him he always told us about his experiences in the office and we used to have a nice laugh and he always enjoyed working with the staff i would also like to thank uh sapanda jisuda sunita aunty sahibjan and manoj da for their help towards our family over the last 8 years my father's position was also bound to draw a lot of opposition misunderstandings and disagreements but he never carried any personal issues with anyone he always wanted to mend relationships and he always wanted to be friends with everyone he never held grudges and pursuing peace was part of his personality he always appreciated the contributions and efforts of his colleagues Finally I would like to thank a few people who had been with us during the last days of my father Dr Limitula Longkumar Dr Amangla and Mrs Wapang helped me when I contracted the virus and I was forced to quarantine in Sarampur I was not able to go see my father when he went to Calcutta <laughs> It was at this moment that dr ralte reverend dr sunil m kelb and sasmit singh who were extremely supportive and helped my mother and my family to the very end they helped my mother when she was alone in kolkata and she was not able to deal with the stress and the work that was involved and and they they all helped helped us so much and i'm at least glad that my dad had the chance to receive treatment which so many in india are unable to receive i would also like to mention a few of my dad's friends uh i i think dr jacob gopal swami and reverend dr pakyam t samuel were like his best friends he would always tell us about them and uh, the plans and the plans and the future that they plan and the vacation and the trips it was like they were small kids and they would they they were best friends and he even suffered so much when he heard of the demise of mr dr tata pudi matthews emmanuel he was a uh, inconsolable inconsolable on that day and he cried so much and he kept telling my mother that the poor family has to stand in front of the hot sun during the funeral i apologize if i missed out any particular person my father always respected everyone and he liked a lot of people i also thank you all for giving me this opportunity to speak for a while i know our future is uncertain as a family but we are assured that we would receive that most support from all of you and i'm glad that i know everybody would lend their hands though his life was cut short we are still grateful for his life and we should continue to celebrate his legacy God bless you and thank you all. Uh
I request one member from Dr. Emmanuel Dathapadi's family to say a few words. Dear esteemed BTSSC community, I speak on behalf of my mother, Rajkamal, my sister, Nyaya, and myself, the family of late Reverend Dr. T. Matthews Emmanuel. I will briefly introduce us, my mother, Rajkamal, Matthews, she was she is working as a headmistress here in Hyderabad. My sister Nyaya, she is working uh, in corporate communications, and myself Neeti, I'm pursuing my PhD on antiviral research in Canada. This has indeed been a shattering loss to us, and uh, we are still staggering under the burden of grief. My father was a very responsible, determined and affectionate man. He was always proud of having daughters and he brought us up as confident, independent young women. The last time that we spent with him was Easter Sunday when he was here in Hyderabad with us and we had a good time and we dropped him off at the airport and he was supposed to come to see us in about two weeks time. He was a healthy man in all ways, so we did not expect this. His sudden loss has pulled us into the depths of despair. But our hearts are filled with gratitude towards the entire BTE SSC family. You have been with us throughout this ordeal. You have supported our family both morally and financially, for which we are very grateful. We especially thank Most Right Reverend Bishop Dr. Anil Kumar John and Dr. Zacharias Mariprem, along with all the other dignitaries of the BTE SSE community for their unconditional support. Dr. Jacob Gobalaswamy was right next to us as a pillar of support during our weakest moments. Dr. Vincent Rajkumar arranged for a coffin and for, a, for the burial for my father in Bangalore. Reverend Dr. Vasant Rao arranged for the funeral for my father. We are extremely indebted to all of them. We can never forget Dr. Patro's support. Kindly unmute. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. We can never forget Dr. Patro's support to us during that period. He cried with us in our grief, and it meant a lot to us. His loss has pained us and we shared this terrible grief with his family. Dr. Justin has been strengthening us with his words throughout this period. I also want to specially thank Ms. Lena and Mr. Vasant who have been working with my father for the last four years. And they have done their best to help my father when he was unwell. And we convey our gratitude to them. My father always had only good words to say about them and their work ethic with their experience in the last few years. We have, received experience. we have received many strengthening words and even more powerful prayers all this while, which are our only source of comfort. Thank you very much to each and every dignitary who has shared their condolences in this meeting. I also want to thank the beautiful choirs who have rendered heart touching songs. A thank you to the Senate for organizing this memorial service. We are indeed blessed to have you all. We convey our sincere condolences to Dr. Patro's family. You are always in our prayers. Please remember that we are always there for you. I once again thank all of you for your support. As we wait on the Lord to heal our broken hearts, we will continue to pray for each of you and your families. Thank you all very much. Dear friends, this is a special time to pray together for these buried families. And I request Reverend Dr. Simon Samuel to lead the prayer. Eternal God, God of the living and God of the dead, we who are alive here now and our dear brothers 
who are not with us. We together, O oh Lord, live in you. Your word says that we who are alive are also dead and our life is hid with God in Christ Jesus. And therefore, O oh Lord, we in our distress, in our pain, sit here remembering the great ministries that our dear brothers have done. Your servants, Dr. Patru and Dr. Emmanuel. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you have given to us to work with them, to minister with them, to receive from them and serve along with them, O oh Lord, for a number of years in the Sarampur fraternity. O oh Lord God, at this time, all of us who are in this platform, we lift our two dear families in thy presence. The family of Dr. Patro and the family of Dr. Emmanuel Tathapati. Oh Lord God, our hearts go out to them. Lord, we unite our hearts and minds, lift them up in thy presence and pray for your comfort and consoling hand to come down upon them and comfort them and console them, strengthen them, O oh God. O oh Lord God, this afternoon we have heard from them the wonderful testimony of their parents, their father, especially fathers of oh God. What a wonderful life well lived in the family, in the church, in theological colleges, and finally in the Senate of Sarampur College and Board of Theological Education of the Senate of Sarampur College. Dear Lord God, we receive their ministries, their contributions, and we pray, O oh Lord, that you may enable each and every one of us to carry their legacy forward so that the Senate and the Board may accomplish the vision that they have set for the Senate and the Board. Lord, we pray for the family of Dr. Tathapudi, for his daughters and his wife. We together, your anointed servants, pray that your blessing may remain and abide with the two daughters, Niti and Nyaya, and also Raj Kamal, O Lord. We pray that they may, O Lord, prosper in their life. They may, O Lord, walk with you. You may be a father, you may be the father for them, O Lord. We understand that these two daughters are in the higher level of their studies, O God. You give them success in all the things that they do. Let your hand be with them, O Lord, and grant them success, O God, in everything that they do. We pray for Raj Kamal. Lord God, you be with her in a very special way. Anoint her, strengthen her, O Lord, and let her experience your peace in her heart, O Lord, in a very unique and very special way. Lord, we pray for Dr. Patra's wife and his three sons, O Lord. We thank you for their life. We thank you for their, O Lord, boldness and courage, O God, even though they are in the deepest of pain at this moment, O Lord. We especially pray for three sons, O God. We thank you, O Lord, for giving them the opportunity to grow, learn, and accomplish uh, many things in terms of their studies, O Lord. We pray that you may lead them to the fullness of their academic life, their studies, and then future career, O oh Lord. So far, their dad has been with them. And now we pray that you be their dad for them, O oh Lord. You will lead them forward, O oh Lord, that they, three of them, accomplish what their dad has envisioned for them, Lord. We together bless them in your name. Pray for, O oh Lord, his wife, our dear sister, O oh Lord, we pray that your peace may rule their heart and mind in Jesus Christ. Beyond human understanding, Lord, let your peace hover over her. O oh Lord, that is our prayer this 
afternoon for her, O oh Lord. Together, Lord, as a Senate family, we lift both these families, O oh Lord, in thy presence. And we want to see them, O oh Lord, walking with you, receiving from you, and prospering in their life in every way, O oh Lord Jesus. We give you thanks and praise for the Senate family, the friendship, the fraternity that we all hold so precious in our hearts. We pray that you lead the Senate, the board, to accomplish their purposes and plans in the days to come. We commit ourselves and our dear families and these two dear families in thy presence. Pray that your eternal arm may surround us, uphold us, and lead us forward. Thank you and praise you, O Lord, for hearing our prayer. For we are asking this prayer in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, we are coming to the end of this memorial service before the final prayer and benediction. I would like to take one moment to express my sincere gratitude and love to you all. Um, more than 250, around 300 people attended this online memorial service from different parts of the world, especially I express a sincere gratitude to our master, Bishop Anil Kumar John Sauron, and former president, Felix Sinos Trimini, and also many other distinguished uh, guests from different uh, organizations, also principals and other distinguished guests, and precious family members of Dr. Patro and Dr. Tatapuri. Of course, uh, their sad demise is a great loss to the entire Senate. But I think now I felt their loss is a great loss for each one of us. That kind of affection and attachment we all have with both of them, that is very uh, clearly reflected through this memorial service and different reminiscences from. Uh, various um, uh, people. Anyway, this is the power and strength of the Sarambur fraternity. Anything happened to anyone in this group? Everybody is together to handle the issue and to uphold the legacy of the Sarambur College. So let us rely upon God for the well-being of all Sarambulo system and all affiliated colleges and all members of the family. And especially, uh, we definitely will uh, hold both buried families in our daily prayers. And I request all of you to continue your uh, support uh, in various ways to these families and also remember the whole Sarambulo system. In fact, this memorial service was arranged by the, well, with the permission of the master and by the executive committee. And the executive committee selected a small group uh, and uh, our deputy registrar, Mr. Dr. Justin Moses, functioned as the uh, coordinator along with him, Dr. Dimatrullah, uh, Dr. Simon Samuel, uh, Dr. Rodin Moya and Dr. Jake are all there. And in fact, they made this event as a memorable day in our life. Once again, I thank you all for your uh, support and prayer for the successful and blessed uh, uh, service. And I thank God for all the blessings he showered upon us. Uh, to uh, strengthen each other and to uphold our fraternity and love. Thank you so much. I welcome Dr. I request Dr. Jacob Govalaswamy, the senator, to offer the prayer and benediction. O oh Lord our God, our refuge in strength in times of trouble. Meet us in our sorrow and lift our eyes to the peace and light of your compassion. 
dispel our fear with your love ease our loneliness with your presence and renew our hope with your promises help us to trust you in darkness and light in sadness and joy you are eternally gracious merciful and caring lord send your holy spirit to comfort our hearts in the light of your glory and grace oh lord we thank you for the gift of your this earthly life we thank you for the life of dr chandanu kumar patro and dr matthew emmanuel tatapudi for the years you gave them oh god of peace as we end this time of gathering and bid our last farewell to our departed beloved ones we ask for your comfort upon every friend and every family member be with them each and every day as they adjust to life without their loved one we seek that your spirit will be their constant companion assuring them of your love and care fill their longing and emptiness with your overwhelming love let them rest in your faithful care especially in the coming days and weeks oh god of comfort let your presence be known to each one who suffers from the pain of these losses strengthen our faith that all your people who have died in the love of christ will share in his resurrection as he lives reigns with you now and for ever amen let us receive the blessings of the lord now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to god our savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen amen dear friends i would like to thank our beloved president metropolitan secretary mr april who has been constantly encouraging us to do things and also guiding us from the front at this time of crisis we want to thank him on behalf of the master uh, sarampur college the senators the council members and the uh, heads of institution the families of uh, uh, dr sandanu kumar patro and dr mutata uh, pudimathi simanuel we thank him for the leadership that he has given us uh, at this time of crisis and with helping us to arrange this uh, memorial service in this way uh, we have a short you know uh, we have received lot of condolence messages and also uh, tributes to the departed souls encouraging them and also remembering their contributions we have selected few of them which we will uh, just scroll it down if you have time you can stay back and see that actually. thank you once again and for joining with us within a short notice we have just gave one and a half days time to uh, just prepare and, uh, and 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 come to this program and many of you have responded positively and turned this to this program we thank you uh, on behalf of the senate all of
Thank you, sir. Very meaningful memorial service. Thank you. Truly, it was a meaningful memorial service. God bless everyone. Amen. It was a blessed memorial service. May God comfort you, strengthen you. The condolences from the Gideon Center National in India. Sujata, Bunny, Winnie, and Finney, Rajkamal, Niti, Jaya, you are in our prayers. We feel, we experience together with you the loss of our beloved ones. With the hope of resurrection, we're going to see them one day. Till then, God be with you. God bless you. Thank you. We are deeply indebted to the Senate of Sarampur family for organizing such a wonderful memorial prayer service. I would like to express my gratitude to every single person who has encouraged us, gave us the condolence messages and have been praying for us. We remain indebted to all of you. God bless us all. Thank you. We will continue to pray for you all. Thank you.